Hey everybody, welcome to Chapel at Northwest. This is our midweek worship and devotional experience. I cannot wait for this to happen. We have been working on this so hard and this is something we're gonna be doing every single week. So I hope you're excited. Get ready to worship, get ready to read some scripture, get ready to pray, get, get just get ready to dive in to what God has for us tonight. Here we go. Sing a race, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I. Twas grace that tore my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieve. How precious, dear, that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secures. Oh, He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, oh, amazing grace. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. Shall soon dissolve like stone. The sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever mine. Will be. Forever mine, you are forever mine. So, church, this next song is called "This Is a Move," and uh, this song is, is such a powerful, such a powerful song, and, and it's it's one of those songs that, though it is a little repetitive. 
it is, it is such a great reminder of how powerful our God is. Uh, some of the lyrics in the verses are, mountains are still being moved, strongholds are still being loosed, bodies are still being raised. And now he's not talking about uh, bodies in the, in the literal sense, but death inside of us is being raised through our belief in Jesus Christ and us giving our lives to Jesus Christ. So in that, our dead selves are being raised to life through Jesus. And so as we sing that, I want us to remember how powerful our God is. And in times where we're being told how powerless everyone else is and everything is and how powerless we feel, let's remember how powerful our God is. Mountains are still being moved Strongholds are still being loose God we believe in Yes we can see that Wonders are still what you do Bodies are still being raised Giants are still being slain. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you Come and do what you do So we need a move We need a move The mountains are still being moved Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. Bodies, bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. Oh, God, we believe. Yes, we can see it. Wonders are still what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. Come and do what you do. Comforter, 
my all in all here in the love of Christ I stay there in the ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse is lost his grip on me for I am his and he is mine but with the precious blood of Christ No guilt in life No fear in death This is the power of Christ in me from life's first cry till final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of a man could ever blur me from his hand. No, he turns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand No power of hell No scheme of a man Could ever blow me from his hand Till he returns, yes Or calls me home Here in the power of Christ here in the power of Christ, here in the power of Christ, I stand. Hey there, and welcome to a brand new series we're calling The Chapel at Northwest. And our hope for this series is, is that it's going to be kind of like this midweek shot in the arm, this midweek dose of encouragement, just an opportunity to get together and to sing a little bit and to and to dig into the Bible just a bit. Uh, it's going to be short. It's going to be hopefully engaging, hopefully be really practical and really beneficial for everybody. Uh, it's the Chapel at Northwest. You can follow us on, on our YouTube page. You become one of our subscribers uh, so that you can get updated every time we post a new one of these videos. Uh, and again, I hope it'll be an encouragement to you, and I'm really excited excited about this process. And so we're going to start, I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going to dive into the Word together. Here we go, let's pray. God, thank you for the gift of technology. Thank you for the opportunities we have to just gather together uh, to worship you, to sing, to share the word together, uh, and just to be encouraged and, and hopefully learn some things along, uh, along the way. Uh, God, I pray that you'll be in the midst of everything we talk about in this moment. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so a couple of years ago, um, I heard this quote that kind of, I, I don't know, I'll be honest, it, it kind of wrecked me a little bit. I was from this, this old Scottish preacher. His name is Robert Murray M. Shane. And he said this, he said, whatever a man is on his knees before God, that he is and nothing more. And man, when I heard that, like it, it stuck with me, it challenged me. And, and, and honestly, I, I got to confess, it, it kind of wrecked me a little bit. Because here's the deal, and just being honest, if... If my relationship with Jesus, like if, if it's going to be gauged by my prayer life, 
Uh, and, and if really who I am as a person and, and who I am as a follower of Christ and who I am as a pastor is, is really kind of gauged and judged by my prayer life and the quality and the quantity of my prayer times, if, if I really am who I am on my knees, if that's really the, the standard, I, I, I worry. I, I worry about that. I struggle with that. And, and now it's not that I don't love prayer. I do. I, lo- I love to pray. Uh, I, I really love prayer, but but when I look at my prayer times, when I look at my communication with God, because that's all prayer is just communication with God. When I, when I look at my prayer life and the time I spend on my knees, man, there are days where I look and I say, I, I want more. I, I just want more from that time. I, I want to have my prayers mean more. I want them to be more powerful. I want them to be more like the ones I read about in the Bible. Like there, there's a story in the Old Testament from the book of Exodus. And it's just such a cool story. It's, it's uh, the first battle that the Israelites have after they've left slavery in Egypt. And they come up against this group of people called the Amalekites. And Moses talks to his general, a guy named Joshua. And he says, okay, Joshua, you're going to take the people out and you're going to fight this battle. I'm going to go up on this hill and, and I'm going to sit up on this hill and I'm going to raise my arms up in the air. I'm going to have the staff of God in one hand and, 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 and I'm going to pray. Uh, and, and we're going to win this victory. We're going to win this battle against these Amalekites together. And so Moses does. He goes up on this hill. And um, a, lot, a lot of scholars, they, they, they look at this and they say, you know, that staff of God represented prayer. It represented Moses' prayers to God. And so he goes up there. And, and every time Moses had his hands up in the air and as he's holding that staff, the Israelites were winning the battle. But then Moses would get tired. And so he'd lower his arms back down. And then whenever he lowered his arms down, and symbolically when he stopped praying, the people stopped winning. So then two people came to help Moses, a guy named Aaron, who's Moses' brother, and another Jewish leader named Hur. And they came together and they held Moses' arms up so that the Israelites won the battle at the end of the day. And they won this incredible military victory because of prayer. And man, I want prayers like that. And I, I don't know, maybe I, it's just me, but I don't think I'm alone in that. I think a lot of us, we want our prayers to be that kind of, that powerful, that impactful. We, we want our prayers to be more than just the, you know, okay, Lord, thank you for this food, bless it to our bodies, amen. Or the prayer time right before we go to bed and we fall asleep shortly after we say, dear Lord. Like, I, I think we, most of us want more. We want prayers like the ones in the New Testament too. Like, there, there, there's this, this, this story, I'm going to read a little bit from the book of Acts. And it's Paul and Silas, they, they start a riot because uh, they, they heal somebody and they cast this demon out in and, and this town called Philippi. And the, the city leaders, they arrest Paul and Silas and throw them into jail uh, because it, it created this, this kind of this firestorm. People got really upset that Paul had, had healed this person. And so they're sitting in jail and this is what it says from Acts chapter 16. It said, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bonds were unfastened. And man, that's the kind of prayers that I want. I want to pray prayers that shake the earth, that are earthquake causing prayers. A lot of us, we want that. We want that kind of prayer life. We want to pray better. We want to pray bolder. We want to pray bigger. We, we want to move, we want to see God move through our prayers. And so in this chapel time, in these first few weeks together, we're going to talk about prayer. We're going to talk about how we can pray more boldly, how we can pray bigger, how we can pray with more faith. We're going to talk really practically about, okay, how do you pray? Are there models for us to pray? We're going to look at the Lord's Prayer or what we call the model prayer. We're going to walk through that together. We're going to talk about just some of these practical things that, that I think, at least I hope, will be really encouraging, that will really kind of pump us up. And, and, and my prayer out of all of this is that at the end of this, this series, You and I are going to be able to pray with confidence, with boldness. We're going to love prayer more than we ever have before, and we're going to see God move. So since we've been talking about prayer, I'm going to go ahead and close this out with some prayer uh, together. Uh, So if you bow with me, let's pray together as we close. God, Lord, this thing called prayer, we all know it's good, and most of us pray you know, we, it's something that we, we all do, even if we're not 
close with you, even people who aren't followers of you, there are times where they pray. And they know that it's necessary, but God, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's a challenge. Sometimes it feels like we're just going through the motions. And sometimes many of us wonder, okay, does it really even matter? So God, I'm asking that you will help us with this thing called prayer. God, that you will help us in these moments. God, that you will help us through maybe these chapel services or through through something else that, that we come in contact with, a Bible study, a, a person, a conversation, a sermon, whatever it is. God, that you will help us pray better. You will help us pray more boldly. You will help us to pray bigger. God, I, I'm praying that you will use all of these things to really push us closer to you, to challenge us, to equip us, to strengthen us, God, I'm praying that this will be really practical for us and that we'll come out of this on the other side going, man, I just want to pray about everything. God is so good. God, we just love you so much. Thank you for the gift of prayer. Thank you for this time together. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.